verse 13 of 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Notice these poignant words. Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be men of courage, be strong, do everything in love. What words these are for us today. The Apostle in this his final exhortation lists four imperatives that calls for militant action while the last calls for love. The first calls for action, the last calls for love, the greatest action. Be on guard. This is a call to alertness often associated with the second coming. Stand firm was a call to be stable, a quality that was apparently lacking among the Corinthians. To be men of courage, be men of courage, literally act like men, suggests courage for a fight while to be strong is linked with that courage. Finally, love. Paul recalls chapter 13, I believe, and is a quality which will dominate even in the fight. Can you imagine? We are in a fight, but we must love. Love is not a weakness, friends. It is our greatest strength. Love is the strongest weapon, stronger than the greatest army any day. We need it is a necessity for us to be on guard. Why? Because our adversary, Satan, is like a lion, always stalking us, ready to launch attack and destroy. Stand firm in the faith. Be men of courage. Be strong. God, when he commissioned Joshua to serve him and promised that every place on which the sole of his feet will tread, he had already given to him, advised him to only be strong and courageous. That was the only prerequisite, friends. We as people called to serve the living God are called to be strong, are called to be courageous, not hiding when troubles come our way, but standing tall in the midst of adversity. We need to reach beyond our weaknesses and limitations and mental blocks in the area of giving up easily instead of persevering. Some of you may be tired of trying. I don't know, friends, but you may be disappointed. Some of you disillusioned that you can't bear the pain of not making it. You may have been trying to get there for days, months, even years, but you simply have just failed. Every time you take a step forward, you take two steps back. So the best thing you can think of doing is just giving up. And that will surely end your desperation. But friend, in the bargain, people even decide to end their lives, you know. Paul, though, says that we need to stand firm in the faith. Stop for a moment. Consider with me if giving up is really the best solution for you. Let's consider why we decide to give up instead of giving it another try. It all begins when the picture in our minds of the way things ought to be doesn't match the way things really are. The mind and reality is separated by a huge gap. The ideal picture is shattered by the reality of the situation. The bubble bursts, the dream dies, and then we become disillusioned. In the perfect picture we had drawn in our minds, we didn't expect unreasonable people, overdue bills, delay, bad health, failure. Now reality clashes with fantasy. Reality destroys that perfect picture. Now we dread the future. So instead of continuing our studies or instead of meeting that unreasonable friend again, instead of forgiving that bitter relative, instead of giving ourselves another chance, we decide it's time to give up. 
we give up because the future does not hold any hope for us. If this is what you are going through, my friend, my dear friend, please take heed of Paul's words. Stand firm in your faith. Stand firm. Be rooted in your faith. Be courageous, be strong, and do everything in love. Verses 15 and 16. You know that the household of Stephanus were the first followers in Achaia, and they had devoted themselves to the service of the saints. I urge you, my brothers, verse 16, to submit to such as these and to everyone who joins in the work and labors at it, who joins in the work, not just joins, but labors at it. When we read the word addicted, we immediately think of some substance abuse. But these people were addicted to service of the saints. That is a great addiction, isn't it? He urges the Corinthians to be submitted to those who come to serve. Submission, friends, is not a choice. It is a command, an order, given not to bring us below, but to push us above. It is not an option, it is an obligation. Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. Service demands, not requests politely, but demands submission. Only when you bend low can God make you rise up. If you are standing on your toes, God cannot lift you up. But if you are prostrate, God can lift you up many places higher. Verse 17 now. I was glad when Stephanus, Fortunatus and Achaius arrived because they have supplied what was lacking from you. Three men, Stephanus, Fortunatus and Achaius. They apparently made up the delegation that brought the letter from the Corinthian assembly to Paul. Paul tells the people in Corinth that these three believing partners were so wonderful that they made up for the whole large assembly in Corinth. Verse 18, For they refreshed my spirit and yours also. Such men deserve recognition. Friends, Paul is saying, Give them a vote of thanks when they get back. Such men deserve recognition. It is difficult to give them a pat on the back. No, friends. Paul is saying, such men deserve recognition. We must relearn the art of encouraging others so as to grow together. Rather than destroying one another, blackening each other's character with our tongues, bringing the whole body down, friends, we need to remember that you and I are part of the same body. Let's not be like those crabs that when caught and put in an open box, they always pull the other crab down when it's trying to reach up and escape. Many times we are like that crab. We don't like others growing because we feel threatened. Let's learn to speak encouraging words to build other people up rather than slander and murder with our tongues, character assassinate, gossip. Let's be on the building side, the building up of God's kingdom, not the breaking down side. Notice verse 19 of 1 Corinthians 16 now. The congregations in the province of Asia send you greetings. Aquila and Priscilla greet you warmly in the Lord, and so does the assembly that meets at their house. Aquila and Priscilla had a home group prayer. It met in their house. Isn't that beautiful, friends? Be like Aquila and Priscilla. Open your house. And really, very soon, you'll start counting your blessings, naming them one by one. You'll be surprised to see what the Lord has done. A family, a group that prays together, nothing as beautiful as that. Make your home a house of prayer. Be like Aquila and Priscilla, friends. 
from this humble cell group there grew some giants of the faith your group may be small but let it not discourage you concentrate be sincere and god would do the rest notice verse 20 now all the brothers here send you greetings greet one another with a holy kiss the holy kiss was a custom that was prevalent those days notice now he says all the brothers send you greetings and then he goes on to say greet one another we send greetings from here but take these greetings and greet one another you know sometimes we don't greet one another it would be very painful to spend eternity together with people we cannot stand but friends learn to love one another because in eternity we can't but live together now verse 21 i paul write this greeting with my own hand what does it mean it means that some letters paul did not write with his own hand he used the help of a scribe but this letter paul himself wrote it wasn't dictated but it was written and signed if anyone does not love the lord a curse be on him come o lord come maranatha if anyone does not love the lord remember the lord jesus asked simon peter do you love me in john 21:17 he didn't ask peter if he would deny him again he just asked do you love me friend that is the acid test today do you love him paul chooses to use two words anathema and maranatha anathema is to be accursed maranatha is to invite the lord come lord jesus come which category do you belong to friends anathema or maranatha if you reject the lord it is anathema if you accept the lord you would say maranatha come lord jesus come now the last verse of 1 corinthians my love to all of you in christ jesus the classic ending of paul's letters in christ jesus and christo every true believer is located spiritually in the safest location possible in christ jesus and christo rock of ages cleft for me let me hide myself in the in christ my love to all who are in christ jesus and then he says amen so be it or let it be so if you love the lord jesus you will love his followers the epistle closes on the high note of love in christ there is always not only abundant life but abundant love also as believers we owe a debt of gratitude and service to the lord because he saved us twice he made us and redeemed us having completed 1 corinthians friends we have seen to some extent the gratitude that overwhelmed paul's heart the purpose the goal the motive of teaching this very practical letter of 1 corinthians is that your heart too would bubble and burst out with a life of gratitude to our loving lord and savior jesus christ god bless you friend mm-hmm.